Okay, I'm going to go through the non-legendary creatures. I do run a good amount of non-legendary creatures in this deck for utility and card advantage purposes because green-white is a pretty surprisingly really good color combination EDH and there's a lot of good creatures to take advantage of it, especially in, their, in the utility department. So we're going to start off uh, Scourge Hive Elder. He's pretty much a staple in EDH. Rift Sweeper. This guy got unbanned in September because it no longer affects generals, because generals now stay in the command zone instead of in exile. So now Rift Sweeper got unbanned. And I really like Rift Sweeper because not only can he hose like suspended stuff like against Jahori the G2, but it's really good against Graveyard Hate because this deck is going to abuse a lot of recursion and it allows you to take cards that got exiled that you have and just shovel them back in your library. Farhaven Elf. Just a mana ramp elf. And then what else? Same concept, except slightly better because the for you can get a forest, so you can get a dual land and put it in play untapped. Mirror Entity, absolutely amazing in EDH. He basically takes the a huge glut of mana that I might not be using and just turn my creatures into huge monsters. And it's also part of an infinite combo that I will cover later on. Stone Cloaker. This guy might seem kind of weird, but he actually fulfills a lot of different applications in the deck. He's a 3-2 flyer with flash. When he comes into play, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. And when it also comes into, into play, remove a card in a graveyard from the game or exile it. And this is good because Stone Cloaker allows me to protect a lot of my creatures because he just respawned by flashing them into play and just bounce the creature that might die. And he's good because not only can he save creatures, but he can also reuse comes into play abilities, which is really good for creating lots more card advantage. And also he provides graveyard hate and graveyard hate is pretty much required in EDH because there's a lot of decks that abuse recursion of the, in the graveyard as much as possible. And this deck is definitely no exception because I will cover how this deck can just abuse the crap out of its graveyard. But stone cloaker, Pretty good graveyard hate because if you don't want to bounce anything else, you can just have him bounce itself and have it so that his exile ability will go on the stack and then resolve and then he bounces himself. So basically for just three mana at instant speed, you can just pick off cards in people's graveyards. So it's pretty good. Yamaya Dryad, 2-1 and then three mana, Forest Walk, search your library for forest and put it into play tap under target player's control. I usually never do that. I almost always put the forest under my control because I'm using it for mana ramp, especially if I want to fetch like a temple garden because that's a forest. So it fixes in mana ramps, which is really good. Yamamaya Dryad, a green stable card in EDH. He should be pretty self-explanatory. Eternal Witness, another self-explanatory card. Hopefully... <laughs> I shouldn't cover that, I have to cover him too much. Knight of the Reliquary, really amazing card in this deck. He gets plus one plus one for every land in my graveyard, and I can tap him to sack a forest or plains, and search my library for a land, put it into play and shelve my library. So he's good for provide for fetching like Gaius Cradle, if I need Gaius Cradle, if I need like a strip mine to destroy someone's Tolarian Academy or some other problematic land. And he's good for combat tricks. Like if someone is going to like uh, activate Neveral's disc, you can respond by activating Night of the Reliquary and then sack to go get your Yabamaya Hollow and then use that to regenerate a creature like Night of the Reliquary. So he's really good for that. Or you can like get a Core Haven for like surprise combat tricks and then like shut off a creature. So there's a lot of good stuff with Night of the Reliquary. And then like even though I don't play a lot of fetch lands like in my real life version, I'm getting more of those in the future. So like when I have like the full suite of fetch lines from Onslaught and Zendikar, he gets really good with those because he obviously is very synergetic with fetch lines. Solemn Simulacrum, just more mana ramp, another great utility creature. Genesis, excellent, excellent recursion engine, very good. The only problem possibly is like getting him in the graveyard, but I do have like two main ways of getting in the graveyard. 
Revel Arc. I cannot say much. I cannot say enough about Revel Arc and how absolutely amazing he is in this deck. Personally, I think he he might be the best card in the deck. Completely. When he leaves play, return up to two target creature cards, power two or less from my graveyard to play. Okay. Notice how all of these utility creatures have two power or less, like especially Eternal Witness, Mirror Entity, and Night of the Reliquary. That's really cool because you can like reanimate Night of the Reliquary and then he gets like a huge power bonus when he comes to play. Because it counts the power and toughness when he's in the graveyard because his bonus doesn't, obviously doesn't do anything there. So Revelark is really good in that sense. So he provides just a huge amount of card advantage. And since he says when he leaves play, doesn't mean he doesn't have to go to the graveyard. I can bounce him with Stone Cloaker and bounce it back to my hand and then just reanimate a bunch and then reanimate two creatures there. Karma Guide, another awesome utility creature. Reanimate a creature in my graveyard when he comes to play. And he has two power. And that's absolutely incredible with Rebel Arc. And this is going to be part of an infinite combo that I was telling you about with Mirror Entity and Rebel Arc. Acidic Slime. One of the newer additions from M10, and he is just nothing short of amazing. Two power, he has death touch. When he enters the battlefield or comes to play, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. So he can destroy just pretty much any problematic card that's in play right now. And that is just incredible, especially with death touch. He can pretty much like go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most... like big beaters on the ground unless they're indestructible or they regenerate so another amazing utility creature enlisted worm 5-5 five, five for 6 but he has cascade and the cascade can generate a huge amount of card advantage and cascade's really fun in EDH because you're always going to get something really good duplicate 2 power so I can reanimate with rebel arc and he's another like Stable utility card in EDH. He did get slightly weaker though when the generals use the combat use the general zone now because if you do if you try duplicate a general and then they decide to send it back to the combat zone, duplicate won't get the power and toughness from the general because the general has to stay in exile for duplicate to get the power and toughness boost. So if they just send it back to the command zone, duplicate will still be a two four, but that still makes it a really good card. Eternal Dragon, another amazing creature, provides early mana mana fixing, and since it's plane cycling, I can go get dual lands, or I can get misfail planes. And then, late game, he's just a 5-5 flyer that absolutely refuses to die unless your opponent has graveyard hate. And finally, Crows and Tusker, uh, another self-explanatory green utility creature in EDH, provides a lot of card advantage.